How do people get their website to show up first on Google? Like, how are they actually doing it? Because you know that being one of the first results on Google could mean a ton of money for your business. You're about to learn how you can rank number one on Google. I got just what you need. Let's do it. So the dream is to have an online shop and then someone somewhere in the world types something into Google. They find your website and then they buy from you. This is the dream because it's free. You don't need to pay for ads. You don't need to pay a social media specialist. You can learn how to do it yourself and then start making sales. SEO is gonna be your free ride to success. My name is Michelle Bally. I'm gonna walk you through how you can rank number one on Google and start making those sales. You can be anyone, anywhere in the world and start ranking first on Google, so just keep watching. Let's say you wanna get a new car. You open up your laptop, type buy Honda Civic into Google, let's say. You'll get results from dealerships, maybe CarMax, a few used vehicle sellers. Now, the reason that all these results came up is because the words that you typed in, Honda Civic, are the same words found on their website. In SEO, these are called keywords. Putting keywords on your site increases the chances of your website or store actually showing up on the first few hits of Google, which by the way, the results that come up, that's called search engine results page or SERP for short. Keywords are important because it's like you telling Google, hey, this is what my website's about. And then Google's like, oh, okay, got it, got it. Car parts, cars, got it. And it will show your website to the right people. But how do you know what keywords you should use? Use a keyword research tool. A keyword research tool will help you see how often people are searching for certain terms, what keywords your competitors are ranking for, and it will help give you new ideas for terms that you would have never otherwise thought of on your own. So which tool should you use? In our last video, I recommended Google Keyword Planner. This is an amazing free tool that will help you understand how many searches specific keywords are getting, but in this video, I also wanna recommend Ahrefs. Come back over to my computer and I will show you how to use this. So see here, here we can check out the competitiveness of our keywords and see the strength of who is ranking for the keywords. Now, I wanted to show you this because it's better than Google's low, medium, high competition scoring. So this being a Shopify powered channel, we actually spoke with probably the most skilled SEO professional that I know. He works at Shopify, his name is Kyle, and he gave me this updated tip. Okay guys, these were his words exactly. He said, if you sell handmade soy candles, make sure you have a product or collection targeting that term, not just candles. Here's another one from him. Low sugar granola versus granola. You'll have a much easier time ranking for low sugar granola versus just granola, and you'll likely be able to convert more of those buyers too because you're offering them exactly what they want. How about beard cream? It's a low volume keyword, right? But beard oil, that's high volume. However, if it's a cream, it's a cream. So don't chase beard oil, you feel me? Okay, so once you have a list of awesome keywords that you're happy with, you're gonna have to put them on your website. But where to put them? If the keywords are informational, meaning that the user is looking to learn about something, for example, like how to make hot sauce, then these types of keywords are really great for blog posts. If the keywords are product related and indicate someone searching is ready to buy, like hot sauce six pack, for example, they would go on a product or collection page. By the way, guys, collection pages are highly underutilized. People kind of just forget to put their keywords on collection pages, but collections are instrumental in getting your site ranked. They can be so effective that you might even wanna consider making a collection if you have three or more products in order to rank for a specific term. So look at the dimensions of your products and make collection pages just for that. So for example, a dimension could be the level of heat, spicy, medium, mild. So you'd have a collection page for each of these dimensions. A dimension could be the type of pepper maybe, jalapeno, habanero, and think outside the box. It could be dietary, maybe like sugar-free and gluten-free. If you do make collection pages part of your SEO strategy though, don't forget to link that collection either to the navigation of your website, like right over here, or if you don't wanna make it front and center, you can include it as a link from a blog post or a product page. But the last thing you wanna do is have an orphan page, which means it's a page that exists on your website and not linked anywhere. This is bad for SEO guys, so don't do it. If you're finding this video helpful so far, give it a like, that really helps me personally and it does help the channel. But back into it. In order for your website to show up as one of the first results, your content needs to be competitive for a chance that your page will show up over another one. So to get a sense of what will make you competitive, you're gonna wanna look at the SERP. So look at my screen here. If I wanted to rank for how to make hot sauce, I'll simply Google it and get a barometer of 
what the quality of my content needs to be to at least be considered to rank. This article, for example, this is like 2000 words. If I were to write a 200 word article like written with AI, for example, that would not make me competitive. And these guys would beat me and show up before me. Length and keywords are not the only thing that you can compete on. So take a look at the actual content and see what is it that they're missing. So I'm looking at this article here and I'm like, wow, wow, wow. Like, there's a lot of paragraphs before you can actually get to the hot sauce recipe. So if I were to remake this in my article, I might make a jump to recipe button that will take the user straight to the recipe. Why? Because I am enhancing the user experience and Google loves that. I want you guys to start using Google Search Console. Not enough sellers use it and it's a missed opportunity. So Google Search Console is a free tool that will help you monitor your site's performance in Google search results. Okay, come to my computer, I'll show you how it works. Okay, so here I can see if my website pages are being indexed by Google. Here, I can get a look into which search terms are actually helping my users find my site and my products. So for example, let's say I notice a bunch of people are finding my site through the keywords low salt hot sauce but most of my keywords are low sodium hot sauce on my website, then I would go in and change my keywords to match what people are actually searching. Another thing that I love about Google Search Console is that it finds issues within your website that are negatively affecting your ranking. Without Google Console, you might be totally unaware of these issues, like a page with an old URL, for example. That would be like finding a needle in a haystack, right? Overall, Google Console will help you improve your site's ranking and search results. If you wanna get started with it, the way to access it is you would search Google Console. <laughs> then you'd sign in with your Gmail account and then it will ask you some verification questions. If you want a full tutorial on how to connect your Shopify store to Google Console, let me know and I can definitely make that for you. If you have a storefront, you're gonna wanna include local SEO in your strategy. Local SEO helps businesses improve their visibility in location-based search results on Google Search, Google Maps, and other search engines. So come over to my screen, I'm gonna show you how. I'm gonna type in hair salon Brentwood and see this section right here? All these businesses came up. Google delivers billions of local search results every month and if you optimize properly, you can show up here. No matter what kind of a business you have or where you're located, you can attract customers this way. I'll show you how they did it. So the first thing that you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to set up your Google business profile. That's how those businesses were showing up in that box at the top like that. To set up a Google business account, first you're gonna to need to create a Google account if you don't already have one. Enter your business information, provide details like your business name, address, phone number, and website. And then after that, you're gonna choose a category by selecting the most relevant category for your business. At that point, you'll need to verify your business. So Google will send you a postcard to your business address with a verification code. Once you receive it, enter the code online to verify your listing. You'll wanna make sure your Google business profile is optimized so that you're actually showing up. So include contact details, opening hours, photos, and videos, and any business attributes like Wi-Fi and outdoor seating. Be sure to keep your business details up to date. So if your holiday hours are changing or you have a change in address, for example, make sure that you're updating this right away. Keep your business profile active to show Google and users that you're an engaged business owner. So you're gonna wanna inform users about your latest news, events, and even offers. This can really help you rank higher in Google and overall just get more customers. And also guys, do not neglect reviews. If you have more reviews and a higher star rating than your competitors, you stand a better chance about ranking them so that users might be more likely to choose you. And make sure that you're responding to your Google reviews too, guys. This shows that you care about your customers' feedback and it also gives you opportunity to counter any negative comments. After you're done setting up your business profile, next you're gonna wanna do some keyword research using some of the tools that we talked about, but this time the type of keywords that will be location specific. Many people are searching for products or services by searching like best followed by a neighborhood, city, state, or province. So for example, it would be like best birthday cakes, Chicago. If you don't have a physical location, then this next one is gonna be for you. Google Merchant Center. This is a completely free way retailers can showcase their products across Google search engines, maps, YouTube, and more. Let's say I type in ASICS shoes into Google. See these results, they're shoppable. This is because it's coming from Google Merchant Center. By using Google Merchant Center, you can increase your online store's visibility, attract new customers, and boost sales. So here's how to set it up. Visit Google Merchant Center website, which would be www.google.com slash retail. And then once you're there, you're gonna wanna click on sign up for free button. 
You'll be asked to provide your information about your business, like your business name, website, URL, and contact information. Google will need to verify your website to ensure it meets their requirements, and you'll typically need to add a meta tag to your website's homepage. Once your website is verified, you can start adding your products to your Merchant Center account. Optimizing your products on Google Merchant Center is essential for maximizing your visibility and driving sales. So make sure your product information is accurate and complete. Use descriptive language to explain the product's features, benefits, and unique selling points, and have high quality images that are clear, high res, and shot at various angles to give your customer a good idea of what the product is. The quality of your content is important because Google is tracking how users engage with your pages. If they're clicking around, staying on your site for a while, that's actually good. To get users to engage with your site, your pages should be detailed and they should be including any information that a user might need in the format which is most useful to them. So instead of just having a product description on your product page and calling it a day, include bullet points of product attributes, product FAQs, and reviews, guys. Oh my gosh, reviews. Make sure that you include this on your product pages. So important. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description box with some of the best Shopify apps for product reviews. This will build trust and it's gonna create a feedback loop with your customers and you know how sometimes when you're like Googling something, you can actually see the star ratings of the products right on the SERP, just like this. The way that they were able to get that is because they're using a customer review functionality. So definitely guys, make sure that you're doing this. If you guys haven't already seen the how to build a Shopify store start to finish video, make sure that you do that because not only is this gonna help walk you through how to get your store found on Google, but it also walks you through step-by-step -step how to set your store up so that people are actually checking out too. So watch that video next. It's called the official Shopify tutorial, set up your store the right way. I'll put a link for you guys in the description box. And if you don't already have a Shopify store, I will leave a link for you guys guys in the description box for a free trial. All right, guys, that's everything that you need to know for now. I hope this video was helpful. My name is Michelle Bally. You're watching this epic channel called Learn with Shopify, and I cannot wait to see you guys next week.